Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to your next day programming in the C programming language. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is about code optimization, but not the type where you're going to have to think about the sort of complexity of the algorithm or the data structure that you're using, but instead, what can the compiler give you for free? Meaning that our compilers are pretty good at optimizing code for us. Not in all cases necessarily when it comes to logic, but I do want to show you a few of the different things and tricks that compilers can do to just generate more efficient code. So that means when you compile your code, you can actually get your compiler to work for you, which is a wonderful thing, and get your code to run faster. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what this means here. So again, what today we're going to be talking about is this idea of different optimization levels. And today you'll get to sit back a little bit and just kind of see some of the different examples of the things that compilers can do for you. So when I mean different optimization levels, I mean the actual flags here where you'll compile your code with something like dash O one, and that's a uppercase letter O here that we have here. And there's other optimization levels like O two, which will make things go even faster. O three, or even O oh, fast, which is another optimization level. But sometimes when we're optimizing our code, we might want to be specific about some of the types of instructions that we give to our compiler. So sometimes there's also other optimization levels for things like, for instance, O G for debugging and O of S for optimizing, not just necessarily the executable or the execution speed, but the size of the executable that we produce. So these are a few of the different optimization levels that we're going to want to play around with. And just to give you sort of a full introduction to this, let's go ahead and just explore with our compiler GCC. And again, this will be similar if you're using Visual Studio or Clang, the optimizations that you find here. So let's go ahead and just look at the manual page here. And I'm just going to go ahead and search for the word optimization. And very quickly, you're going to see the first thing that's brought up is all these different flags here for optimizations that we can have. Now, later on in this lesson, we're going to go through a few of these just so you understand the types of things that your compiler can do for you. And again, it's important to understand these because this means you can write your code in a very readable way and not necessarily have to hand tune your code. That said, the best kind of optimizations in general are telling your compiler exactly what you want to do. But regardless, it's nice to know what kinds of things we can do with optimizations. So I'm going to go ahead and search for optimization again here just so you can see the different levels of control as we talked about here. So dash O, which is by default O of one here, will take a little bit more time to compile your code, especially as your C programming language projects grow, but again, oftentimes find sort of conservative approximations or rather perform some level of optimization on your code that will usually speed it up. Again, it's not guaranteed, but what is going to be guaranteed is that your code's going to do the same thing, at least as far as the compiler knows, and then hopefully your code will run faster. So this could be things like getting rid of unused variables, for instance. So here's some of the different optimization flags that are turned on. Again, we'll talk about these. And as mentioned, O2 gives you more optimizations. O3 gets even more optimizations. And then there's these other modes that you might want to optimize for, like OS optimizing for size, for instance. And then, of course, we've got O fast here, which might break your program here. Now, you have to be a little bit careful with these. And you can go ahead and read here, disregards strict standards compliance here and just tries to make your code run as fast as possible. So be a little bit careful with these, but feel free to play around with them while you're learning the C language. And then dash OG optimizes for the debugging experience, meaning that we'll get some optimizations, but our code will still be debuggable. Now, again, what do I mean by this when I say our code's still going to be debuggable? Well, in this series, we've been compiling with the dash G option, and you can recognize that again in our drawing pad uh, here, where I've got the, the G here, and typically we've just done dash G in many of our programs. But the idea is certain optimizations might allow us, or rather uh, give us more speed at the trade-off of us losing information. So with that said, let's go ahead and play around a little bit with some of these optimizations so we can see exactly what we mean. So to start with that last one and where this trade-off is, there's a wonderful website. It's called compileroptimizations.com. Very good URL here. 
And in particular, one of the first optimizations, which are listed on the left side here. So I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can read that. I want to look for is called uh, function inlining. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And let me go ahead and scroll over so you can read it here. But this is the idea that the overhead associated with calling a function is removed here. So what do we mean by this? If I have a simple function like add here, well, if really all I'm doing is adding these two integers, why have the overhead of copying into integers as arguments here, having to compute a result, and then initially keeping track of the return address of add and so on and so on. So let me go ahead and just illustrate the cost of a function call so you can see how function inlining helps us. So go ahead and bring this here. And I'm only going to do this for a few of the optimizations because we'll sort of get the gist here. But the idea is, again, if I have a main program here, and I'll just write out the sort of pseudocode here, and I call some function called add here with two and four, well, what I have to do here if I want to store this result in, say, x here, is in my main program, we've got our, our uh, stack memory here. And we've got our other segments of memory here, which I'll just label heap, the text segment, data, etc. maybe debug information and so on. Well, whenever I make a function call, I need to sort of put on the stack here, let's say main here. And I have to keep track of the address of main here, this function here, and then maybe any other functions that I call here. So add, for instance, I need to know where to return from. And then I've got these two arguments here and the add function x and y where I'm copying or creating in these two values, et cetera, et cetera. That's the overhead. So why not just get rid of this here and just say int x equals two plus four. And that would be a nice optimization, right? We know exactly what add's gonna do, so why not do that? Okay, so that's an example of an optimization our compiler can do for us. But even as you're looking at this, you might see another optimization here. So two plus four. Why even have to spend the time to perform that instruction 2 plus 4? Why couldn't we just say, hey, 2 plus 4, we know what that is. That's just 6. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that here and just have int x here equal 6. Let's go ahead and see if there's an optimization for that. And again, from compileroptimization.com, we should see something uh, of this uh, sort here. Let me go ahead and click on some of these. Here, constant folding would be the example here where instead of returning three plus five, we just return eight. Okay, so our compilers can evaluate some of these things. They're smart enough. And in addition to this, you might now say, let me bring up our code example here is, well, in this particular program, we're not even using this variable for anything, right? X is never found anywhere in our code. So let's just get rid of it. So for that, I'm going to click on another optimization, dead code elimination. So code that's unreachable or doesn't affect the program in any way can just be eliminated. And these are some very common optimizations that you'll see here. Now, let me go ahead and just go through this list and show you a few of these different optimizations. But in order for you to understand this, I think it's useful if you can actually play around with some of these optimizations. So as I show you the optimizations, I want to introduce you to yet another very valuable tool called Compiler Explorer found at godbolt.org. And yes, Godbolt is the last name of the developer there. And what we're going to go ahead and do, just making this window a little bit bigger, is type in our C code on the left-hand side. And you'll see the corresponding assembly on the right-hand side. And you'll even see the individual opcodes for some of these instructions here at the top here. So you can see the machine code that's generated. And what I'd like you to do as well, if you're following along with this, uh, if I make our screen a little bit smaller here, you'll see from the icons here, if you go to output, and make sure you check compile to binary and execute the code. And then you'll get a window here that's actually executing our code. And you can rearrange this as you need here. So for example, let's go ahead and do our little experiment here. X equals, uh, let's go ahead and do add two numbers. And then we'll go ahead and write our add function. Add takes an int x, int y, return x plus y. And we'll go ahead and see our program. Now, as I highlight over each of the lines of code, you'll notice on the right side the assembly instructions that correspond. Now, you don't need to really understand this part here, the assembly, although it might be a great way to learn. On this series, we're expecting you to know uh, C code here. But again, I just want you to see what is actually being done in this computation. 
Now, in order to put things together with the different optimization levels, we can over on the top right of the screen here, do dash and then any of the arguments that we were using before, like dash G for instance, which will compile with debugging symbols. But I wanna use the optimization flags that we learned about today. So again, things like O of one, O of two, and so on. Now it's very common to use O of two in production. So let's just go ahead and do capital O of two here and let's see what happens. Now, instantly what you're gonna see is, well, when I highlight over line seven, nothing is showing in the corresponding instructions on the right side here. Now, why is that again? Well, if I'm not using this result anywhere, then we don't need to generate any code. Thus, this is an example of an optimization. So let's go ahead and make use of that result here and just print out the value here. So it's being used. And then we should see that this function is indeed being called here. And let's go ahead and um, make sure that I include our library here, standard io.h. So you'll get the warnings in the bottom um, left-hand corner if you uh, have any uh, syntax errors. And of course, there's this printf here. Okay, so now if I highlight over printf here, we'll be able to see that, well, we are effectively, and you have to train just a little bit here, using the value x6, so this is in hexadecimal here, and moving this value around and eventually calling a function. So it's actually being used here. Now we have main here, but again, no uh, view here of add. Oh, well, here's add here. I guess we do have the function address. Let's go ahead and see if I get rid of optimizations here, if anything more comes up for the add function call. And immediately when I do do this, you can see, again, your assembly, you might not have any idea of what this is going on, but you can kind of read through it and, and try to understand just a little bit, which is a great exercise, and perhaps for another uh, series. Um, but you can kind of see that there is more going on here. So that's just what I want you to compare that this add uh, on the assembly side, where we have this label here for our add function. Again, as I highlight over uh, add at line three, you can see it flashing up and down. More is going on here. So again, with inlining, we are effectively getting rid of this function and just saying, well, why don't we just put X plus Y here wherever I have the add function call. Okay, so now as I recompile with O2, this optimization, well, add effectively becomes uh, not much here. <laughs> we can, uh, it's, it's not really doing anything here. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and look at some of the other um, optimizations here that are kind of fun. And I'm kind of picking some of the more important ones that we might want. Uh, one in particular that's interesting is called loop unrolling. So this idea, if you have a loop here, for i equals zero, i less than 100, i plus plus, et cetera, why not just unroll this loop? And what's the advantage that we get here? Well, by unrolling this loop, I'm doing less comparisons here. I'm doing less increment operations. In fact, I'm doing half as many in the code below. See if you can convince yourself that this is true. So let's go ahead and try it out in Compiler Explorer and see what happens here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is keep our add function here. And in fact, let's let's print off the result here. And let's do for int i equals zero, i less than four, i plus plus. And then let's go ahead and just indent this a little bit. And I'm gonna leave this as o of two. Now let's go ahead and make use of uh, i here in our loop here. So we'll just do i plus i, so zero plus zero, one plus one, two plus two, etc. And let's see if we can try to pick out if this gets unrolled for us to effectively be, well, we would have uh, print f, and we would just be printing off the integer for zero plus zero, or just zero explicitly, or one plus one, and I'm just gonna type these out, two plus two, three plus three, and well, that would be indicating that we've unrolled this loop here. So again, let's go ahead and see if we can find that in our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and let's see if uh, we get our add here. Now it looks like we are doing an actual uh, loop here. Let's go ahead and highlight over here. And I'm just kind of looking through our code. Let's see here. Well, I have add, uh, let's see, with a tier, or rather that's just an add instruction. Uh, so let me actually 
just for some of you who again aren't used to uh, assembly let's call this my ad <laughs> just to make it a little bit cleaner here uh, so we can see if that shows up because there's actually adding the numbers uh, in the assembly uh, but what am i looking for here again let's go ahead and just see if we have our calls to print well i'm moving in uh to somewhere where i'm going to do a print i'm moving in the value for somewhere where i'm going to do a print here and then i'm moving in a six here where i'm going to do eventually a print here and that looks pretty much exactly the same as what we're doing here and no loop okay so if we could kind of hold on to some of these lines here where we're moving some value six which would indicate three plus three here into some register where we eventually call print i think this gives you an idea of what's going on here so again let's turn off the optimizations and just see if we see something different to indicate what's going on here well immediately we see we have a my add function that exists in our code and then if I look through our code, we're seeing sort of jump instructions, which is something that we do when we are looping, right? We're starting here, executing our code, and then at line 12, we jump back at line number nine, for instance. So again, this is just kind of indicating that there's more work being done. Even if I can just sort of see more lines of code here, um, we aren't getting that loop unrolling. All right, so that's the idea, and I hope you're picking up some of these optimizations. Go ahead and give you one other optimization that I think is pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and search for it here. Uh, strength reduction. And that's this idea. Well, it looks like it's not here, so great that I can explain it to you. Now, some of our operations that we do might be cheaper. And some of you might know about this little optimization here. So I++ is doing I equals I plus 1. So that means we have to look up the value of I, increment it, and then store that value back into I. But instead, I can do plus plus I, which just finds or increments the address at the address of i wherever this is stored by one here so that's a cheaper instruction and that gives us this idea of strength reduction here so again the best way to get some of these optimizations is to often be explicit it's often showing what we're going to be doing in our code so i usually do write my code as plus plus i and i don't sort of cross my fingers that the compiler is going to do the right thing i like to tell the compiler often what to do but you can rest assured that oftentimes, for instance, uh, I don't want to get rid of this abstraction, for instance, and not have any functions in my code at all. In fact, it's nice to have an add function and know that the compiler can inline this and reduce some of the function calls for me. So that's just a little bit of a recommendation. And in general, I prefer clarity over optimizations. But again, it is good to know what optimizations your compiler can achieve for you. So with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson here and learned a little bit about optimization flags. It's a little bit of an area where folks can get lost in optimization, but it can be quite fun. There's always a way to get programs just a little bit faster. Now, the last thing I'm going to go ahead and do is show you, if you do some of these experiments, is just how to get a rough benchmark of these programs to see, in fact, are they faster. So let's go ahead, back to our code here, and let's go ahead and just take this example here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it onto my machine. So I want you to practice on your machine and not just Compiler Explorer here. And let's go ahead and split our window here. Let's open up a main C file. And let's go ahead and copy and paste uh, what we had. And what I'm going to go ahead and do to make this a little bit more meaningful for you is let's go ahead and increment this up to, oh, I don't know, uh, 40,000 just so we have a little bit of a program that's going to run for longer. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is compile here using GCC our program. So let's do main.c and dash uh, program here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is do things the way we're normally doing. I'm going to compile with the bug symbols. So that's inserting extra information into our program. And that's going to, uh, again, no optimizations. So we're making the function call. In fact, to make this a clean experiment, let me backtrack here and just do the, the main program. So no debug symbols. Uh, so let me compile that. And let me go ahead and now do dash O of two here. And I'll rename this program uh, optimized. Okay. So we have two versions of our program, one that's been compiled with these optimizations and one without it. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is try to compare these two programs here. So time is a cheap and easy way that you can just run this program here. And that'll give us a benchmark here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these. 
Now, of course, with running things, you might want to run them many times, turn off background processes that are running, uh, run them in different orders and so on. But this is just going to be a cheap experiment. So go ahead and run this one here. And this tells us about 0 0.006 seconds in real time. But the actual time allocated to the process is about 0 0.04 seconds. Let's see for our other process here. I run this here. And this one <laughs> claims nearly 0 seconds here of the actual user time. So one of the first rules with benchmarking is this is sort of a non-result. So you notice that I've incremented this to 40,000. Let's go ahead and 10x or even 100x that result here, and then recompile each of our examples and do another trial run here. Now, one of the things with this experiment is we will eventually want to figure out where are we spending our time doing lots of prints, but let's go ahead and just do another uh, quick round of our experiments just to see if we can get a meaningful result here. So this example took 0.221 seconds, and our optimized example again took about 0.234 seconds. So let me go ahead and rerun this again and try to give a, us a meaningful example. Let's just do you know 200 million uh, or 20 million, I guess. Let's do 200 million runs here. I'm going to actually remove the uh, print here so that we're not getting any uh, input output here. Uh, recompile our examples again for uh, round three here. And let's go ahead and see what happens with our optimized program. Does pretty much nothing. And then our uh, regular program, well, it takes 0.369 seconds. OK, so this is sort of an interesting experiment. And you can start to ask yourself some questions here. I think, or at least it's pretty clear here in our optimized program, it figured out or was smart enough to figure out we never use this result, so we essentially do nothing. OK, so you can kind of see the example there. Whereas this example still computed this loop 200 million times and did some work for us, which was wasteful. We didn't end up using it. So I hope that's an interesting example of just what optimizations mean and to prove that some of these optimizations are actually making a difference in terms of the instruction count in our program. And the time tool available on Linux or you can find an equivalence on Mac and Windows are ways that you can start benchmarking these. Now, again, you have to be a little bit careful with what you're benchmarking because as soon as I put in this printf here, we're going to spend a lot of our time in input output. And for this particular program, that might not be very meaningful with what we're doing or the savings. What would we actually be measuring in most cases? Well, maybe if we have a big enough example, we might be measuring the benefit of this inlining of a function in our optimization. In fact, let's go ahead and just do this one more time for completeness, recompiling each of our programs. And let's go ahead and uh, run this one. And it's going to take a little bit longer. And we can run this other program, uh, but I'm going to wait till we actually get a result here so as not to interfere with the result. Although as this is running, there are other things you might want to consider, like are some values being cached in the background and these sorts of things. Uh, but that's the idea. So I'll let this run, and then I'll do another run of our uh, optimized program. All right, so that one finished in about um, 11 seconds of actual processing time. Let's try our optimized version. And again, we're spending a lot of time just writing out to our actual terminal here, the actual text information. So that's what's really taking a lot of the time here. Since both of these programs are doing that, we might not get a huge result. Hopefully, we'll see something meaningful in terms of the actual uh, inlining of the executable, but that is yet to be determined. So I'll unpause the video once this finishes, and we'll see. All right, so in this example, you don't see as meaningful of a result here. And I want to leave this in just to show you the delicate balance that it is with our optimizations that we need to take into account for, and again, what we're measuring. So with that said, if folks are interested, I'll go ahead and do some more videos on optimizations and some things if you are interested. And we can actually figure out how to optimize calls like printf, for instance, to write things out faster, again, if folks are interested. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We looked at a lot of different things with different optimizations, how to use them with our compilers, and are even thinking a little bit about, well, the delicate science of measuring performance. And in fact, it's a really important area to understand so you know if you're actually getting results that matter. All right, with that said, folks, comment below if you have questions. Give this a big like if you found this useful or learned something new. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos in this series.
With that said, thanks again for your time and attention, and we'll see you in the next one.